Funny how the UFO narrative coincides with the race to weaponize space. If Wednesday's House Oversight Subcommittee hearings on UFOs had happened ten years ago instead of today, it would have shaken the world. Imagine someone from 2013 hearing congressional testimonies about routine military pilot encounters with giant flying tic-tacs, floating orbs, 300-foot red squares, and cubes in clear spheres zipping around in ways that surpass all known earthly technology by leaps and bounds, or about secret government possession of otherworldly aircraft that are trying to reverse-engineer and the dead bodies of their non-human pilots, or about the possibility that these creatures are not merely extraterrestrial, but extra-dimensional. Their jaws would have hit the floor. Now, in 2023, we're getting incrementally drip-fed bits and pieces of these stories for six years. So the scene on Capitol Hill on Wednesday didn't have the impact it would have had in 2013. It's making headlines and getting attention, but not as much as Sinead O'Connor's death or people's thoughts on Barbie and Oppenheimer. The response from the general public could be described as a collective nervous laugh and a shrug. People scroll past the footage from the hearing on social media, go, whoa, that's weird, and move on with their lives. The information's going in, but just kind of on the periphery of mainstream consciousness. Maybe next year they'll show us something that would have been even more shocking to someone in 2013 than Wednesday's hearing would have been, and it will be met with the same nervous laugh and shrug by the people of 2024. Of course, in the circles I tend to interact with, the response is a bit different. People who are highly skeptical of the U.S. war machine also tend to be highly skeptical of this UFO narrative we've been seeing since 2017. Distraction is a word you hear a lot. It's just a distraction from blank, where blank is whatever hot story they personally happen to be fascinated by at the moment. I personally don't buy that explanation. The new UFO narrative wasn't just cooked up at the last minute to distract from current headlines. It's been unfolding for six years, and people aren't even paying that much attention to it. The Empire doesn't tend to orchestrate spectacular events as a distraction anyway. The adjustment of public attention tends to take the much more mundane form of agenda setting in the media, where some stories receive more attention than others based on what's convenient for the oligarchs who own the press. I also see people theorizing that this is all a ploy to ramp up the U.S. military budget. There could totally be something to that, but again, this narrative has been unfolding for six years, and so far the military budget has just been swelling in the usual yearly increments, as always. Don't get me wrong, though. I'm as skeptical about this thing as anyone. For one thing, the origins of the mainstream UFO narrative, which began in 2017, were steeped in extensive distortion, dishonesty, and journalistic malpractice, and were carried forward by shady intelligence operatives like Lou Elizondo. David Grush, who made by far the most sensational claims at Wednesday's congressional hearing with his tales of dead aliens and reverse-engineered UFOs, is himself an insider of the U.S. intelligence cartel. But for me, what really stinks about all this UFO stuff is the timing. Here we are in the early stages of a new Cold War, which features a race to militarize space, and we're hearing congressional testimony about mysterious vehicles posing a threat to U.S. airspace, which have the ability to go up and down between Earth and space very quickly. That smells off. I mean, does it really sound like a coincidence that we're seeing all these news stories about UFOs and aliens at the same time we're seeing news stories about a race between the U.S. and China and Russia to dominate space militarily? A foreign policy article from last year blares the headline, China and Russia are catching up to U.S. in space capabilities, Pentagon warns, with the subheading, The Militarization of Space is Picking Up Pace. These warnings are echoed in articles by Defense One and Time. An article on the United Nations website from last year carries the title, We have not passed the point of no return, disarmament committee told, weighing chance outer space could become next battlefield. A 2021 report from the War Machine-funded Center for Strategic and International Studies titled Defense Against the Dark Arts in Space 
protecting space systems from counterspace weapons, warns of the urgent need to build more space weapons to counter U.S. enemies. A Global Times article from last year carries the title, Chinese experts urge avoidance of space weaponization amid commercial space capability deployment in Ukraine. These stories about the space militarization race aren't getting the attention the much more entertaining UFO stories are getting. But it seems likely that those who are responsible for moving the war machine around are paying a lot more attention to the former than the latter. The U.S. Space Force took its first steps toward becoming a reality in 2017, the same year these mainstream UFO stories started coming out, with the explicit purpose of countering Russia and China. And it just seems mighty suspicious to me that we're being slowly paced into this UFO narrative, or UAP narrative for those hip to the current jargon, right when there's a mad rush to get weapons into space. I can't actually think of any other point in history when the timing of something like this would have looked more suspicious. So for me, the most disturbing parts of the UFO hearing were the parts that could wind up facilitating the agenda to militarize space, like when this phenomenon was framed as a national security threat, or when it was mentioned that they could transition from Earth to space very rapidly. When asked by Congressman Glenn Grothman, do you believe UAPs pose a threat to our national security, former Navy Commander David Fravor answered with an unequivocal yes. A few minutes later, Fravor described these vehicles as being able to come down from space, hang out for three hours, and go back up. When asked by Congressman Andy Ogles whether UFOs could be collecting reconnaissance information on the U.S. military, all three witnesses, Grush, Fravor, and former Navy pilot Ryan Graves, answered in the affirmative. Asked by Ogles if UFOs could be probing our capabilities, all three again said yes. Asked if UFOs could be testing for vulnerabilities in U.S. military capabilities, all three again said yes. Asked if UFOs pose an existential threat to the national security of the United States, all three said they potentially do. Asked if there was any indication that UFOs are interested in U.S. nuclear technology, all three said yes. Oglis continued his questioning by saying, There clearly is a threat to the national security of the United States of America. As members of Congress, we have a responsibility to maintain oversight and be aware of these activities so that, if appropriate, we take action. When asked by Congressman Eric Burleson if there has been activity by alien or non-human technology and or beings that has caused harm to humans, Grush said that he couldn't get into specifics in a public setting, a common theme throughout the hearing, but said that what I personally witnessed myself and my wife was very disturbing. Grush would complicate this cryptic statement a few minutes later by saying he's never seen a UFO. How this statement doesn't contradict his previous statement about having witnessed harmful behavior from non-human technology and or beings was not made clear. So you've got U.S. policymakers being told that there are vehicles using technology not of this world routinely violating U.S. airspace and posing an existential threat to U.S. national security, and that these craft can go from Earth to space and back at will, and that they need to make sure their nation can address this threat. What conclusions do you come to when presented with that kind of information? If you're a lawmaker in charge of facilitating the operation of a highly militaristic empire, you're probably not going to conclude that it's time to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. You're probably eventually going to start thinking in terms of military technology. One of the most important unanswered questions in all this UFO hullabaloo is, why now? Why are we seeing all this movement on disclosure after generations of zero movement? If these things are in fact real and the government has in fact been keeping them secret, why would the adamant policy of dismissal and locked doors suddenly be reversed, allowing whistleblowers to come forward and give testimony before Congress? If they had motive to keep it a secret this, this entire time, why would that motive no longer be there? 
If you ask the online UFO community, many will essentially take credit for the whole thing, saying the most powerful war machine ever assembled has reversed its policy of total opacity because of pressure applied by disclosure activists. This doesn't pass the smell test. The most powerful empire in history isn't reversing course on a long-standing policy of blanket secrecy because of internet forums and FOIA requests. So why now? Why the drastic and sudden shift from UFOs and aliens being laughable tinfoil hat nonsense to the subject of serious congressional inquiries and widespread mainstream media coverage? Well, the timing of the race to militarize space might provide an answer to the why now question. Is it a coincidence that this new UFO narrative began its rollout in 2017, around the same time as the rollout of the Space Force? Are we being manipulated at mass scale about aliens and UFOs to help grease the wheels for the movement of war machinery into space? How likely is it that by pure coincidence this extraplanetary narrative timed out the way it did just as the U.S. Empire makes a last-ditch grab at unipolar planetary domination? I don't know. I do know that if I'm assigning degrees of probability, extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional beings are here and take a special interest in us and sometimes crash their vehicles and our government recovered them but kept them a secret but suddenly decided to not be so secretive about them anymore, ranks significantly lower than our rulers are lying and manipulating to advance their own interests again. I am 100% open to the possibility of extraterrestrials and otherworldly vehicles zipping around our atmosphere. What I am not open to is the claim that the most depraved institutions on Earth have suddenly opened their mind to telling us the truth about these things, either out of the goodness of their hearts or because they were pressured by UFO disclosure activists. I don't know what the hell is going on with this UFO thing. But I do know the drivers of the U.S. Empire have an extensive history of manipulating and deceiving at mass scale to advance imperial agendas. And I do know that at this crucial juncture in history, where the Empire is clinging to planetary domination with the tips of its fingernails, there are a lot of imperial agendas afoot.